the amazingly terrible, the fantastically awful. That's what this is all about. I'm diving straight to the bottom of the barrel on a mission to dredge up a few, just a few, of the Commodore 64's most endearingly wretched, miserable misses. The best worst games, the cream of the crap, yes indeed. Not just any old rubbish, but the biggest, baddest, what were they thinking, how did this get made, honking messes that I couldn't cover. And offender number one is 1988's Sweep from Mastertronic. Okay, nice music actually, this game's sole redeeming feature, but great tunes, bad game was an all too common theme on the old enchanted dung heap, and that's just what we've got here. A collect the items, open the doors type of puzzler set in the exciting, action packed world of chimney sweeping. Now, Mastertronic may not have always had quality as their top priority, but they usually had their finger on the pulse when it came to marketing. Uh, but maybe not this time. What made this seem like a good idea, I don't know. Some garbled half-remembered history lesson, perhaps. Comprehensively refreshed on a Friday evening, it must have started to sound almost sensible. Hula hoops, yo-yos, they've come back in, and kids used to love sweeping chimneys. It was huge. I'm telling you, we are long overdue for a chimney sweeping revival, and this is our opportunity to get in on the ground floor. We're gonna smash it. And well, I don't think they did. This must all have been created and published in a very excited hurry, too quickly for anyone to stop and think about what it was that they were doing. In fact, I think the only question anyone asked in the development process was, is this brown enough yet? To which the answer was clearly always no, because it is very brown indeed throughout. I suppose we could forgive its bizarrely dull setting if this was a decent game, but sadly it's far from that. I don't know where you're supposed to be, in a giant chimney, rooftops, some muddy cellar, wherever it is, there are few thrills to be had. Finicky controls and stupid unavoidable gotcha deaths pile up the frustration, and after that, well, there's not really much going on here to enjoy. There are worse games out there, maybe. It wouldn't be hard to dig up some old basic listing with less excitement, but for connoisseurs of bad games, there are few commercial releases, few clunking misfires that are quite as compellingly tedious as this. But, ah, uh, but this is still only perhaps the second most ludicrously dull game on the old plastic cowpat. What on earth could be first in this field? Well, hang on folks, because it's time to say hello to the Willow Pattern Adventure. Developed by Mr. Micro and published by Firebird, this is a game inspired by Willow Pattern Ceramics. Seriously. Yes, indeed, the blue and white Chinese style design that's been a popular dinner plate motif for more than two centuries. Your grandma's dinner service, the game. And somehow it's even less exciting than it sounds. An arcadey adventure game of the type that Ultimate did so much better, this is a really uninspired Sabre Wolf ripoff. Most of the gameplay revolves around wandering through the maze-like world and battling a bunch of basically identical enemies, with swords as your sole weapon. Now your character seems to have got the swinging of a sword down very well, but not actually fighting with them. In fact, no one in this game seems to have quite got the gist of swashbuckling at all. Each sword is a one-shot deal. Pick it up, fling it at an enemy and hope for the best. Thrilling indeed. The only other joys to be had are the bridge sections. Leap from rock to rock, whilst a bunch of giant, terrible Chinese stereotypes try and knock you into the water. The very same section repeated to the point where you'll begin to think that a watery death is definitely the most fun option on offer. But nothing about this really makes sense. Who on earth gave this the green light? 
We need some blue sky thinking here, people. We need a hit, a crowd pleaser. What are the young people of today really into? Chinese porcelain, that is the stuff. Kids love it. They're mad on it, buying it, collecting it, swapping it. You know, at my son's school, they've had to ban it entirely. It was causing too many fights in the playground. Star Wars is finished. China is cool, daddy-o. It must have seemed like a good idea to someone, but, well, God knows how. Real hardcore C64 fans might note that this game looks suspiciously similar to Mr. Micro's previous game, Treasure Island. In fact, it's pretty much the same thing with a bit of a reskin. I suppose that makes sense if Robert Louis Stevenson isn't quite cutting it anymore then. Well, 18th century dinnerware is the next logical thing you try. I mean, if that doesn't do it, what will? Where next? Well, let's look at something that was definitely much more on the nose when it came to audience appeal. BMX Ninja from Alternative Software. Oh dear lord, a sort of one-on-one -on -one fighter that manages to do absolutely nothing that it promises with regards to ninjas, BMXs or indeed fun and enjoyment. If you're thinking that what you really need is a fighting game where two identical sickly yellow fighters on bicycles stare dejectedly at the floor and swipe helplessly at each other with their back wheels, well, this is the game for you. Three moves are yours, two seem to be as useless as they are unimpressive. The only one that really has any hope of hitting your opponent is a physics, geometry and anatomy defying 180. This is your arsenal as you face your foe, which turns out to be wave upon wave of clones of yourself, your sole mission to turn them into rather limp clouds of dust. You will occasionally be surprised by a totally catatonic skateboarder and once in a while an equally go-getting guy on a scooter. If you get really lucky, someone off screen might pelt rocks at you, but that, well, that does seem like a fairly reasonable reaction to the situation. Later levels offer, well, surprise, surprise, more of the exact same, the backgrounds being the only difference, taking you on a tour through exciting and completely static locations, including the beach, Cape Canaveral, a fun fair, and for the final level, where else could it be but, well, the, the seedy side of town. Yeah, I don't know what it is that costs $5, but I don't want it. I have a horrible feeling that Alternative Software knew exactly what they were doing with this, though. Who cares if it's utter dreck? Cram a couple of buzzwords into the title, make the box look good, it'll sell itself. And, well, it probably did. Surely though we can go no lower, games can get no more ridiculous can they? Well how about another bite of the cherry from Firebird with Ninja Scooter Simulator. Attention to detail, that's what this is all about. Yes, we're dealing with a simulator here. None of your casual arcadey ninja scooting, oh no, no. The most realistic recreation of this ancient and noble martial art ever seen on a home computer, used to train elite ninja scooter squads the world over, at least those lucky enough to have a C64. Okay then, this is really a rather shoddy rip-off of Namco's Metrocross. Sort of scootery, and once again light on anything actually ninja related. Now I have to say that this is a better game than BMX Ninja, but not by all that much. Better in the way that being punched in the face once is better than being punched in the face twice, but that is about as high as my praise will go. The thrills are still pretty limited, though the music, true to C64 form, is quite nice. None of the charm of the original Metro Cross, and none of the cleverly thought out challenge either. This though seems to be a game from a much more switched on Firebird, one that had finally got the hang of marketing. They had learnt the hard way that pottery is not where it's at, and swung from naivety to, well, outright exploitation. 
because this is a game that is fairly dripping with cynicism. Take some crappy knockoff, load it up with buzzwords, and watch the money roll in, hopefully. Ninja and Simulator, words that would shift units like nobody's business in the late 80s, even if those words were outright lies. I'm not sure where scooters come in, but there must have been a moment when they seemed like the hot new thing, and well, maybe they were. But all this cynicism is starting to depress me, so let's move away from carelessly awful money spinners and take a look at something that was much more of an earnest disaster. Attack of the Phantom Karate Devils. Oh my. You know what, I'm at a bit of a loss here. How can I sum this up? How can I possibly do this justice? Well, how about we look to the professionals? Yes, a genuine game reviewer's insight is what we need here. Attack of the Phantom Karate Devils is one of the most graphically impressive games I've seen in a long time. Fun to watch and play. Not my words, the words of Greg Kaiser, assistant book editor of the Compute Gazette, February 1984. Excellent, but not perfect. That's the final verdict, and you know what, I think he was right to draw attention to this game's slight flaws. Not perfect. Yeah, that, uh, that sums it up. And well, I'm no assistant book editor, but I think my praise would be slightly more muted than his. Your enemy, those aforementioned karate devils, are, well, pretty unforgettable, I will say that. Two disembodied hands followed by a pair of swimming goggles lurching across the screen is an image that will stay with me, maybe longer than I'd like. Need I say that this old place just as good as it looks? Yeah, waggle the joystick and hope for the best is the only real way to tackle this game. The controls are baffling, everything you do saps your energy, and well, it perhaps needs a little work here and there before we can call it perfect. Four levels await the player, each one lovingly rendered in the finest Petsky character graphics that the C64 can summon. Well, except for the last level, which, well, well, it seems to have problems that are all its own. Even our friend Greg of the Compute Gazette took issue with this one. What went wrong? Well, some sort of glitch, it would seem. Okay, this is a game that seems to be constructed entirely out of glitches, but this was a particularly bad one. But there is a bug-fixed version available, and here it is. Ah yes, that's, uh, that's just what it needed. Absolute perfection achieved. To be fair, unlike anything else on this list, this game is quite inventive in its own weird way. Apparently the first home computer game to feature martial arts, believe it or not, and maybe only the second video game ever after Atari's Kung Fu. And yeah, it is from 1983, the C64 barely even a year old when this was released, so well, it's hard to be really down on this game. So, drawing a veil over all that, and moving on to the final act, what else could there be? The one and the only... Yes, it's hard driving. How could I leave this one out? Maybe the most notoriously awful game on the Ordure Ordinateur. Not a field that's light on entries, that's true, but this is the Usain Bolt of shite games, screaming to the head of the pack. Ah uh, yes, this game is a wonderful achievement in that it has absolutely nothing to recommend it whatsoever. Terrible, terrible, terrible in all sorts of exciting ways. Hard driving is exactly what this is, because it's basically impossible to keep in a straight line once you've made the mistake of trying to go round a corner. In fact, couple that with the sound effects and it all seems rather like you're riding a distracted arthritic rattlesnake that's trying to make a call to a tin can full of angry bees and struggling to get a signal. How on earth did this end up becoming the physical manifestation of disappointment that it is? Well, development hell is the short answer. 
the original coder bailed out, leaving Domark in the lurch, and this was thrown together to meet the deadline. Publishers back then were usually pretty shameless when it came to plugging even the most lamentable creations with gusto, but Domark held back on this juddering cataclysm, it only seeing a release as part of compilations and ultimately a $2.99 budget reissue. Basically unplayable and missing so many features, this was a stinker and Domark must have known it. The worst game on the C64? Well, maybe, maybe not. But the worst major release from a major developer? Yes, I think so. I could go on, but I think it's time to call a halt to this rundown. There's only so much of this stuff that anyone can handle. So in tune am I with my audience that I'm absolutely certain that I've picked absolutely the right games and you'll all agree with me totally with no arguments whatsoever. But in the very unlikely circumstance that I've not picked the exact same games that you would have, then do let me know in the comments below and as always any other suggestions would be welcome. And yeah, that's it. I don't know about you, but I'm spent. That'll be all I've got for you for now, but thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, maybe.